Okay, listen, I know I haven't uploaded much this year, but frankly, if I ever miss a Christmas movie masterpiece video, it'll be because I'm hanging. You hear me? I'd rather die than miss this tradition. Anyways, Die Hard is this year's Christmas movie masterpiece. Oh, shoot, sorry. Die Hard is this year's Christmas movie masterpiece. I probably should have started with that. Die Hard was directed by one of the greatest action directors to ever live, John McTiernan, and stars Bruce Willis as John McClane, a New York cop visiting his wife in LA for an office Christmas party at the Nakatomi Plaza high-rise. But after German terrorists led by Hans Gruber, played by Alan Rickman, take over the party, John is the only one to get away in time, and from then on, it's up to him and his wits to try and stop Hans. And before you head to the comments and use claim, evidence, and reasoning to prove that Die Hard isn't a Christmas movie because Bruce Willis said it wasn't a Christmas movie. Die Hard is not a Christmas movie. I think we all know even Bruce Willis makes mistakes. But yeah, Die Hard is a Christmas movie and it goes far beyond the fact that it takes place on Christmas. Firstly, the story has to take place on Christmas Eve. Hans chose to take Nakatomi Plaza on Christmas Eve because the office Christmas party would have meant low security and high profile members of the Nakatomi Corporation would have been present. Secondly, like all the best Christmas movies, Die Hard has themes of family, the evils of greed, how much good one man can do, and redemption. And if Die Hard isn't a Christmas movie, then why is A Christmas Story a Christmas movie? Or any of the Harry Potter movies? Or even It's a Wonderful Life? Why are any of these Christmas movies if Die Hard isn't? A Christmas Story has almost no elements of a traditional Christmas story, and it's incredibly cynical. But it's a Christmas movie because it's super fun, and it takes place on Christmas time, and the TV stations like to air it a lot around this time. And It's a Wonderful Life, for the most part, doesn't even take place on Christmas. Only the third act does. But it has holiday themes of family, the evils of greed, how much good one man can do, and redemption. And the TV stations like to air it a lot around Christmas time. And look what's airing on stars throughout Christmas Day. What makes Die Hard so clever is how efficiently it sets everything up. In the first scene alone, we see that John McClane is married from a shot of his hand with a wedding ring on it. We learn he's a cop. It's okay, I'm a cop. And we learn that despite that he's gonna be the action hero of the movie, he's still a very human character with real fears. You don't like flying, do you? What gives you that idea? John McTiernan wasted no time with this movie. He spent the first 30, maybe 40 minutes setting the movie up, and from then on, it's almost non-stop action and suspense. And it's because of this that Die Hard is an excellently paced movie. Die Hard is two hours and 12 minutes long, and it feels so much shorter because almost all of that time is spent on either action or absolutely necessary exposition. Another thing that helps with the pacing so much is the all-around great performances, especially from Bruce Willis and Alan Rickman. Alan Rickman is a perfectly menacing villain, and him as Hans Gruber is still one of my favorite movie villains to this day. And Bruce Willis does so good at keeping the audience invested in him at all times. For the entire movie, we're with John. And Bruce Willis did a great job at not only keeping us invested in John McClane as a character, but also making him such a likable guy that it didn't matter to most of us that a large part of the movie is him on his own just talking to himself. And if we're talking performances and characters, I've just got to take a moment to talk about Reginald Vell Johnson as Sergeant Al Powell, this LA policeman who's outside Nakatomi Plaza talking to Bruce Willis and joking around with him throughout the movie. Dude, Al Powell is just too sweet. He's the best. I just, I just love him so much. One thing everyone, myself included, has got to commend Die Hard for is how it manages to pull off keeping the villain and the hero separate, but also in contact at all times. Because Hans Gruber and John McClane don't meet for most of the movie. It's necessary to the plot that they don't know what the other looks like. 
But at the same time, the movie needs to establish a menacing presence and a sense of urgency. And so they need to have them both in contact. And so in the movie, John McClane has access to a walkie talkie. And it's through this that he can be communicating with and taunting Hans at all times. And the way McTiernan uses this dynamic throughout the movie to either create suspense, create dramatic irony, deliver exposition, create obstacles for John McClane, or even move along the story is by far one of the best and most interesting parts of the movie. Die Hard is not only a Christmas movie masterpiece, but it's also my second favorite Christmas movie ever, right behind the original Christmas movie masterpiece, A Charlie Brown Christmas. Of course, I'm giving Die Hard an A+. If you like Die Hard, I highly encourage you to watch the rest of the Die Hard movies because all of them are actually super good. All three of them. There's only three Die Hard movies. Right, guys? And if you're looking for a clever action movie like Die Hard where everything is set up within the first 45 minutes and then it's just perpetual suspense from there, I've got the feeling you would like Speed just the same. And fun fact about Speed, it was directed by Jan de Bont, who was the cinematographer for Die Hard. Or if you like John McTiernan's direction in this movie, I think you'd really like Predator if you haven't already seen it, which McTiernan actually directed in 1987, one year before Die Hard. Or maybe check out Hunt for the Red October if you've already seen Predator. And if you've seen both of those, check out the 1999 remake of The Thomas Crown Affair, I guess? And if you just need a rush of testosterone from a movie like you did with Die Hard, dude, come over sometimes. I got you. Terminator, Terminator 2, Inglorious Bastards, Edge of Tomorrow, Mad Max Fury Road, Hot Fuzz, Aliens, any of the Mission Impossible movies, Escape from New York, Ip Man 2, Expendables 2, Rocky 4, Assault on Precinct 13, Con Air, The Rock, The Outfit, The Matrix, The Nice Guys, The French Connection, 310 to Yuma, Punisher Warzone, Free Fire, Haywire, Raging Fire, This Gun for Hire, Hang Em High, Casino Royale, Skyfall, No Time to Die, Clash of the Titans, Cop Shop, Falling Down, Duel to the Death, Best of the Best, Gladiator, Logan, Nobody, all of Bruce Lee's filmography, Ong Bark the Tie Warrior, Roadhouse, literally anything directed by John Yu, The Raid Redemption, Commando, Cliffhanger, Flashpoint, Infernal Affairs, and my second favorite movie ever, Collateral. Well, that just about does it for this year's Christmas movie masterpiece. Before you leave, why don't you tell me, is Die Hard a Christmas movie, or do you like to beat your kids? After you tell me how correct I am, you can head on out. Stay safe and watch good movies. Merry Christmas.